if it walks down the road because a business or some institution wants to come in and we think that that might be an increase in tax dollars. Our biggest problem is realizing where we are and who we are. The fact that the uh, house values are half of what they are in Fairview and, uh, I'm sorry, Franklin and Brentwood reflects on our tax base. That is our income. So if we have a lower uh, property value overall, we can expect lower taxes. Therefore, we can't afford to compare ourselves to Franklin and Brentwood. We can't compare our fire department, our police department, our insurance program to those places because we don't generate the same revenue. You, their fire truck costs the same as our fire truck. Costs as many dollars. The problem is we don't have as many dollars. The average value of a Brentwood home is seven hundred and seventy-five plus thousand dollars. Now, unless we bring a whole lot of seventy-five thousand dollar homes and people to pay the taxes on those, we're not going to have as much money. Our average is a hundred and seventy-five thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars. That is a big difference. That's one of the reasons our tax rate has to be as high as it is because we need the extra dollars because our property values are lower. Our tax base is lower because the property value is lower. We have to take that into consideration when we're wanting to do these big ticket items. We talk a lot about the fire truck. We talk a lot about the police cars, valid issues. If we want to, it's just like driving down the road. What kind of vehicles do we expect to see in Brentwood? I expect to see BMWs, Mercedes, Jaguars. That's commonplace. We drive through Fairview, we expect to see Fords, Dodges, Chevrolets. That's just the way it is. Now, we can aspire to have all these things that these other towns have, but we have to realize we need to either get a second job or get a big pay increase of our own. I want us to be, now I'm a sailor, so, uh, but I'm going to use the uh, the Army uh, little ditty here. I want us to be as good as we can be. To be as good as we can be, we have to know who we are and where we're going. So, those are the things that came to mind. I think that uh, we are on the cusp of big things. I'm glad that we've got those uh, things in place that we do now to help us make better decisions financially. But I can tell you, we're on a pretty strict diet and it's awful hard to stay on a diet for a long time. I, I can just attest to that. I'm on one now and we'll see how that works out. But thank you for your attention. Let's just keep Fairview a tight-knit community. We're not Franklin. We're not Brentwood. If you think we are, you're just wrong. <laughs> Thank you. The podium is open for any comments this evening. <laughs> Yeah.
<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Thank you for allowing us to come together and voice our concerns or thoughts or whatever. Um, thank you. I have uh, written down a few things that people have mentioned in the past couple of months, and so I'm just going to throw them out there to you and let you maybe answer them. I don't know. There were a couple of zoning things that people had asked about um, challenges on. You know, the old liquor store sign that is on, what is that, the Nashville side of Fairview. There hadn't been a liquor store there in over 10 years, I think, or close to it. And as far as I understand, the zoning rules say that when the business moves out, the sign should go, or the new business comes in and puts their sign up. Now, I don't know if that sign has been put into a historical standing because it's been there since 65 or whatever, but I, it's, you know, if it has, then we need to say that so people know. Because the question is, begs, why is the sign still there? Because it really doesn't look great. It's not maintained. It's not lit. It's just up there, and it looks unfinished and undone, and it's all getting old and rickety looking. So if you all can answer that, I have a couple more zoning things that, that people brought up. You want to take that one first, or you want to sure, go? Sure, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, question would be, have you spoken with the city manager or the codes department on that issue? No, I just thought I'd come here because this no, is the opportunity that's, per today. that's perfectly fine. I don't think that any of the four of us have the authority to, right. to, to do anything, but we can. Mr. Hall has already written it down. I just want you to be assured that it will be. Well, I'm sure it will. It will. That's why I brought it. Yes, I appreciate you guys. Because, you know, if, if it doesn't get answered and I don't have time during the day because I work to call Mr. Hall, here we go. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure he will take care of it. Um, the other thing, the other issue about zoning, and, and I understand that uh, there was a, uh, a zoning appeals for a house at, at a house on Chester Road. <clears throat> I pass it every day, twice a day. And... Um, there is a shed in front of this house that I understand went before the zoning appeals and asked if the shed could remain. It's my understanding that the shed was denied to stay there and that they were supposed to have help from somebody within the zoning, or within the city, who was gonna help them move it around back. Um, Mr. Sutton told me that. <clears throat> well, it's been a few months now and it's still sitting there. And not only is it the shed, but it's also a blue tarp tent over a truck. And I understand when you need to work on a truck and you want to have a place to do it, I, above all else, understand that. But it really doesn't look good. <laughs> I mean, for, I, I'm amazed that people at, at Kyle's Creek haven't complained. Um, maybe they have, I don't know. But is there, is there, what's the reason why this hadn't been brought into compliance? It is. It is my knowledge that Monday night of this week they had that meeting, and I, we can let another Mr. Hall meeting? answer. Correct. Another, another meeting. Another meeting from the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I believe that they uh, gave her 30 days uh, to have that take 60. Another month. 60. Two, two months, evidently. Well, it's already been two months or more. Uh, I think she evidently has some questions that it has been there for four or five years and it has never been, the codes department has been out there many times and it's never been an issue before uh, is what I Well, is that's what a I good was, question. Why hadn't it been? That, right. Because if I put a shed in my front yard and, I, and we're talking six feet to eight feet from the front door, I mean, it's, it, there's only room enough for the truck between the shed and their house. And I understand, maybe they need help. Maybe what we need to do as a community is go in and help them get it moved around back or, or cut out the hill so that it'll fit or whatever. It's just not attractive for the neighborhood. And if we're trying to sell houses or bring more people in, I, you know, it kind of reminds me back in the day when I moved out here in the early 80s and there were shacks on the highway coming into Fairview. I love a shack as much as anybody else does. I wouldn't mind having one. But, you know, if you're trying to attract a certain clientele, you shouldn't have a shack in the front, unless it's a well-kept one, let's just say. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not against them. 
But it doesn't, it, if we want to change the way our appearance of our town is, we need to do better. And if we have to help each other to do better, then I'm willing to do that. Which is why I guess Mr. Bledsoe was willing to help her get it around back. But I don't think that, that, that codes is playing fair, let's just say, if it's not okay for a business to continue having a sign that's, you know, <clears throat> not in compliance, because I'll believe me, he'll, he'll give you a ticket for it if it's not in compliance. But it's, it's fine for citizens to have not nice sheds in front of, you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just kind of bad looking. That's just all I can say. And I don't have anything against the lady. I don't have anything against her at all. But if everybody else has to go by the rules, then why doesn't she? That's all I'm saying. It doesn't seem fair. Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the reason for the delay, let's see if I can turn around. Mm -hmm. to you. That's all. The reason for the delay was three of the Board of Zoning Appeals members had not been to actually visit the property. So they delayed from the first meeting to the one that was just recent. They actually met out there on a Sunday afternoon, from what I understand and determine a place that it could be moved to. These three gentlemen are actually going to pay for it to be moved uh, as a donation, mm -hmm. not as not as part of the city, but as a donation. Personal. To, to Personal. Her. Yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, uh, and they've give, give them 60 days to do that. And uh, I see that happening pretty soon, you know. So, so that's kind of was the delay from the first time. and. If I appreciate I, I appreciate that, and I, and I think that's a great thing that they're doing for for that family. And I just I, wish they. I mean, did they do that for everybody? I, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I appreciate, and I don't know all the circumstances, right. but I'm not the one saying this. I've heard a lot of people say this. This is why. Why do people think that our city hall and all you all, and I'm just putting you all in a big bunch. You have friends and you take care of your friends. That's what a lot of people are saying. And I don't necessarily think that that's always right. But sometimes it is right and sometimes it's a, for a good reason. But is it fair? I don't think I mean, we're growing, we're gonna change and we're gonna have people move here from Timbuktu and Alabama and Michigan and everywhere else. And they have their ways of doing things too, which might be really different than ours, but uh, if we don't get our get our handle on what the codes are for us that have been here for a long time and everybody has to go by them, I can't have chickens in my backyard is because I don't have 25 feet from each side of whatever and all that stuff and I don't really want them anymore anyway but the fact of the matter is we have rules and I have to go by them you have to go by them everybody I didn't <laughs> Uh, I'm just has, using that as an example because it's a code the issue. The only thing I ever said was I don't want my neighbors to have chickens. <laughs> but in the end, I voted for the chickens. That's right. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just using that as an example. I it, can, I, can I jump in here? Because mm -hmm. I'm about to die. You know, go ahead. Go ahead. You and I share that characteristic. Yeah, I know. Uh, you're right. It's not fair. But you got to start somewhere. And two, may have been two, may have been three years ago, we had a dozen dilapidated buildings on the main thoroughfares. Mm -hmm. So enough. we established a public officer and we started with what I used to term as our front door. Uh, mm -hmm. Beverly had a different terminology, but I think- A we historical were in, district. I think we were, in, <laughs> I think we were in, in sync on this one. Uh -huh. it, it, to trying to improve so that people wouldn't get off the interstate and then get back on the interstate because right. what they saw didn't appeal to them. Mm -hmm. uh, the city, the business community,